This is question four from paper three one from the 2020 June set of exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that'll bring you to my playlist that has all my solutions for the other questions in this paper. And below the video in the description, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it before looking at my solution. In this question, they give us a curve here. Y is equal e to the power of two X all multiplied by sine X plus three cosine X. And they tell us it has a stationary point between a zero and um, pi, between zero and pi here. And they'd like us to find the x coordinate of that stationary point. And then they'd like to like for us to tell them whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Right. So the first thing you should be thinking when you when you're asked a question about stationary points is simply dy dx equals zero. Oh, before I go any farther, uh, you, in an exam you won't have access to this, but when you're studying, it can be good to put the equation into an on online calculator um, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to pop that up on the screen right now. As you can see, it does indeed have a stationary point, and we can now see that it is, it's going to be a local maximum. And then the equation goes fairly weird. Um, it starts going up and down, basically, um, as you get further and further right. I, I won't zoom out. Uh, back to real me, um, it, it looks something like like this, and it goes off to infinity with pretty much straight lines. Um, yeah, so weird looking equation, and it's this point here we're looking for. So like I said, we want to get the stationary point, so dy dx will equal zero at any stationary point, because the slope of the tangent is zero. So we just need to differentiate this, uh, dy dx is equal to so we're going to use the um, the product rule we have two objects here the first one and the second one and we're going to differentiate this this is u and this is v so let's differentiate the first one we will get the uh, uh, exponential to differentiate nothing changes we just have to use the chain rule and anything complicated up here which means a two will appear and then we leave the second one alone so we get sine x plus three cosine x and then the product rule tells us we add it to we differentiate the second one and leave the first one alone let me write the first bit first and then we'll differentiate this second one the derivative of sine x i always forget what i sometimes do is i just draw a quick picture of sine and think well the derivative at zero would be plus one so that means it must be cosine plus cosine because i know sine turns into cosine i just forget which signs it is so um, sine must turn into plus cosine, and um, cosine will turn into minus three sine x. Let me clean up um, some of this mess I'm making. Now, uh, we can equate some of this. e to the two x goes into both of them. So we can clean this up, e to the two x, and two will multiply by this, two multiply by this. So let's see, let's put them all together. We have two sine x's, take away three sine x's, all right, well that's a minus, let's do the cosine first in that case, um, to six cosine x plus another one cosine x, so we'll have seven cosine x's and minus one sine x. All right, and this is equal to zero. So this is good, once we have two things multiplying equals zero, makes it much easier. The answer is either e to the two x is equal zero, or the answer is seven cosine x minus sine x is equal zero. This one's impossible. Let me draw a little picture down here. This is what an exponential function looks like. It never quite hits zero. Uh, when, when x becomes uh, close to minus infinity, or as it approaches minus infinity, it will approach zero, but it won't quite get there. So uh, this is never true, except when x approaches minus infinity. And minus infinity certainly isn't between these two. So that's not our answer. So this one hopefully is. Uh, we'll have to play around with this a bit. 7 cosine x is equal to sine x. Uh, let's divide both sides by cosine. 7 is equal to tangent x. Sine x divided by cosine x is tangent x. Um, we'll switch these around. Tan x is equal to 7. And x is equal to the inverse tan of 7. 
All right, and put that in your calculator. Remember, they are asking us in radians. The question is in radians between 0 and pi, not between 0 and 3.14, um, or sorry, between 0 and, um, and 180. Uh, that would be in degrees. It's between 0 and pi. So make sure your calculator is in pi. And when we solve this, let me see, I have the number written somewhere. It will come out as 1.4. Uh, 2888 or something like that. Um, so to two decimal, yes, they asked for two decimal places, 1.43. All right, that is part A. Part B, we could do two different ways. Um, let me let me clean out, yeah, let me clear off the bottom of this board here and I'll continue with down here. But we could do two different ways. Let me just spell out one of the ways. Actually, no, we couldn't. I feel we can only do it one way, the way I'm going to show you. But I would like to point out uh, the marking scheme, which hopefully a lot of you have access to. The marking scheme tells us to maybe, a way to check if this is a maximum or a minimum. Um, they ask us to check 1.42 and 1.44. And if we did that, we'd find this number, well, and then 1.43, I guess. And if we did that, we find this number is here, um, this middle one, the first one would be here, and the second one would be here. And that means it's a maximum. That's how they'd like it to test. It's an okay way to test, but it's not great because how it could have actually looked is, what if it looked like, like this? What if it was a minimum? Um, and it actually looked like this, and we, we had to zoom in closer. And if we zoomed in closer, who knows what it looks like in there? It could look like anything. So I'll show you the proper way to do it. I'll just clear out a bit of room. And to clarify that, if you did do this, just test out a couple of numbers either side of the answer. And if they were both smaller, you could say it's maximum, both bigger, you could say minimum. That will get you full marks in this exam. I'm just saying it's not fully correct. When you go on to college, it won't be perfectly correct either. Um, so a better way to do it is to check the second derivative. Um, the second derivative of this. And to do that, we just differentiate this guy here. And we just did something similar. So it's not too difficult. We uh, differentiate the first one. We get 2e to the 2x. Um, and we get, yeah, I'll do it all out. We get, uh, leave this one alone. Then we differentiate the second one and leave this one alone. So there's that one left alone. And the derivative of the second one is uh, cosine becomes um, minus, yes, uh, becomes minus sine. And uh, this becomes, uh, sine x becomes plus cosine, but minus sine, it says minus cosine. Uh, hopefully that was clear. Uh, we equate, let's equate these. We'll get two um, e to the 2x multiplied by 14 cosines minus one cosine would be 13 cosine x's. Um, and then we'd get minus two sines, minus another seven sines, we'd get minus nine sine x. And then all we need to do, because this, this is it, we have the second derivative. All we need to do is test this second derivative at um, a certain point. So at the point x is equal uh, 1.43. Although I will point out, this isn't perfect either. We, we shouldn't use this number. We should use the exact number um, at that point. And that exact number should be in your calculator. The last thing your calculator did was find 1.4288, whatever. Again, I suppose that's not exact either, the calculator. It's, um, it's only to 100 decimal places. So yeah, I guess uh, that's, as, that's as wrong as the way I'm about to show you. Unless you, instead of using this number, if you kept... Um, what was the number again? I think it was the inverse tan of seven. If you put that into this, unfortunately, we can only use a calculator. So we have to be inexact in some places. I've, I've gone too deep into this. A hundred decimal places is certainly enough. Um, and these three, three, three significant figures, is it the same as doing that? Either way, we put this into a calculator. I'll use the last number on my calculator. Uh, which is 100 decimal places, and it will come out as uh, minus 123, which is certainly less than zero, um, which is less than zero, therefore, um, 
therefore the point therefore maximum we just write therefore max that'll be full marks as well so if you get the second derivative and put in the points you know the x value you know if the number is less than zero it's a maximum if the number is bigger than zero it's a minimum okay uh, if um hopefully that answers everything i probably went into too much at the end there and i disproved my own point so i got a little lost if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.